bless the people tonight, God, in their hearts, especially, Lord. God, we know that many times we can speak from our, our mouth, Lord God, and our heart's not always in it, God. But I pray, God, that you just help us to reach to you tonight, Lord God, in a growing position, Lord God, growing intentionally in you tonight, God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 <coughs> Before we uh, get started tonight, I want to let you know that I took it upon myself, Brother Derek, to uh, invite somebody to come, <coughs> come uh, be with us tomorrow night. That is going to bless your heart, I believe. We, uh, my nephew and his family uh, have, uh, thank you very much, brother. My nephew and his family have been uh, <laughs> ministering to the Lord for many years. And uh, one of the songs that they sang uh, was on my mind the other day. And uh, <coughs> God has made his children a lot of promises. Yes. Glory to God. But you know, sometimes his people. <laughs> We can never, don't get me wrong, we can never expect too much out of God as long as we're in His will. You're right, brother. But sometimes we feel like that you've heard the old expression that, you know, your son, your daughter, like, you may say to them, well, you act like I owe you something. See, Christ don't owe us nothing. He sure right. don't. <clears throat> but the Word of God said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the only God. Before we was even loved yes. of our father and our mother, God loved us. The Word of God said that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have a lasting life. And God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. I want to talk to you a little bit about, as we was talking about, my nephew and his family is going to come up and sing for us tomorrow night, if that's all right. Yes, it is. And we're going to try to preach a message. If it be God's will, and He don't change it, He's out to do that. But it's been on my heart all week, and I've been trying to get through it, through the messages and prepare. The church God wants us to grow to an intentional way that we deserve and we see we don't deserve the blessings of God. But he loved us so much, brother, when we when we was in such sin and and sin in the laws and the things of this world that he died for us and therefore he loves us so much today, brother, that he's not going to give up on you and I as long as we're pressing. Amen. He's not going to give up on you and I as long as we're seeking. He's not going to give up on you and I as long as we're striving. And I want to, I want to say this right now. One of the writers wrote in the, in the Word of God, he said, You did run well. Who hindered? It didn't say what. It didn't say some type of sickness. It didn't say some type of disease, brother. Amen. It didn't say somebody else that you may try to blame things on when things don't go just your way. But it said, who hindered? And in this case, he was talking about the person, the people. That's where it always turns back up at. When we as children of God, we get to the point that we think that we're holy. And I preached a little bit to you last night about uh, not thinking greater than that that you are, amen. Because the Word of God says, He that thinks he stand, take heed lest he fall. We can build ourselves up to a degree that we have no other place to go but to fall. And that you and I will do without God. I want to preach to you tonight about growing intentionally. Growing intentionally. How many get up in the morning thanking Jesus for another day? Yeah. Come on, man. 
How many of you and I since last night when we talked about finding the secret chambers with God and therefore praying earnestly and humbly that when you walk into the streets or into the Walmarts or anywhere else that God rewards you openly. Because see, it's not the, it's not the Pharisee way that we pray. Come on now. Many of them pray long prayers, yes. and long speeches, and repetitiously. It seems like they think, Brother Boeing, that they have to beg God to get something done. Glory to God, they don't have to beg God. All they have to do is live for it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. He is the children's bread. Glory to God, if we'll grow for Him, if we'll walk in the ways that He's established, praise God, He will establish all our ways. He will establish our going. He said He'll bless you coming in and going out, glory to God. Yes, He will. Going and coming. Come on. God wants to move in this place tonight. Well, hallelujah, the devil has fought this message tonight. But I'm telling you what, if we'll get to the point, amen, that we realize it's not by, amen, by power nor by might, but by the will of God and by power of the yeah. Lord, amen, that all things are possible unto those that believe. Amen. See, the Word of God said you must first believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him, not those that use Him like a dish rag, not those that God, hallelujah, that goes out there in every walk of life, in every aspect of their life. They say they're a child of God, but they prove, they prove by the fruit that they're bearing. Amen. Yeah. That they're not nothing. Come on. But the steel of self. And of sometimes hatred and despite and anger and turmoil. Break it, bro. I want to preach about a man. Come on. I want to talk about a, a line of people. Yes. Glory to God. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. How many know that the Word of God says to use the prophets and the, the people that He has allowed to be written about? As an example. That's right. As an example. To look to them for an example. Yes. But to look to him, amen, as an author of my faith. And brother, as, as a reason that I have faith and a reason that I can believe upon him. Amen. Amen. Many, many good examples. But one of the greatest is, is the old patriarch Abraham. Yeah, Praise come on. I want you to go to me to the fourth chapter of the book of Romans. It's going to be quite a bit of reading here tonight. Bless them, Lord. But this growing intentionally, it starts out with the measure of faith. It starts out, <coughs> Brother Wayne, in believing that Jesus Christ came as a with a the birth of a virgin birth. It says it's down from every man the measure of faith to believe this. But after we get to the faith that we believe that yes, there was such a miracle take place. Come on now. Yes, there was such a God yes. in heaven that shadowed himself upon a virgin. Amen. That this was possible. Amen. Because see, he does the impossible. <clears throat> but once we come to this knowledge and this faith in God, that is where the intentional growth pattern begins. Faith to believe. Faith to believe. Come on. But then there's a movement that when you have the faith of God in this life, when we get married, we, it's, that sort of seems to be the, the guideline of planning your future. Is that not true? That is the truth. In God, when you believe upon the Son and the virgin birth, Come on now. that's when we begin to plan, brother, a growth for Him. That's when you and I begin. If you've not started doing it, you're way, way behind. Amen. Because see, up. I begin to plan, amen, how I'm going to get there. 
Amen. And I realized, amen, through many years living for the Lord, brother, and seeing every type of people that you can imagine today, in all the places we've been in the last 35 years, amen, 12 different states and numerous times in numerous states. And praise God, listen, we're not finished yet. Amen. And let me tell you something. God said in all these places that we've went, there's normally three things, amen, that is warring against God still more today than ever, ever before. And those three things, amen, line up, amen, in this category. And we've preached about it. We've talked about it. It's in the lust of the eye. And the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Pride of life. Glory to God. And in these places as we've been, we've seen people that was poor. We've seen people that was dirt poor. Come we've on. seen people, praise God, that was worse than that. Amen. And we've seen people that was rich. Come on. And we've seen people in all the categories, brother, that love God. Amen. Amen. Come on now. Where are you getting to, brother? <coughs> It doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what color you are, how much money you got, how poor that you may be, God still loves you. And God knows what you're capable of. Glory to God. And I've done told you that He can make everything. He can make you to be a royal priesthood. It don't matter where you came from. By simply being born of God. And then getting a getting a place in the Lord that you can grow. And that's not in self-pity, brother. That's not in anger all the time. That's not in bitterness and strife and envy. The Word of God preaches against this all through the Word. They but to grow intentionally is simply lined up in a few categories here. That we have to press toward the prize of the high calling of God. Yes, we do. We have to endeavor. We have to strive. We have to, amen, pursue. We have to go after. We have to not be lazy and drawn back. Oh, brother, I'm just drawn back just to chilling. But I'm telling you, it's time to burn it up for God today. Because He's coming back after those that have made themselves ready, that have prepared themselves through the Word of God. And then listen, God justified us by salvation that He gave us. Amen. But He said that we should purify ourselves. Amen. And I'm going to read something to you here in a little bit. Come on, now, brother. Get this across. Come on, brother. Lay a foundation. Come on. I want you to know something, that this Word is to purify our soul. It is. And to grow intentionally, we have to press. We have to strive. We have to have a purpose in life. The purpose in life, brother, gives us a goal to go forward to. Is that correct? Why do you think the author said, you did run well, who hindered? You know, we, we as preachers and teachers that is, have gave many examples. Come on, brother. Parables, if you will, Jesus called them. Here are many examples of the things that you and I do in the, uh, and uses things that you and I possess sometimes. But He uses examples and, and, and these things to make us to understand, amen, just how important that it is, amen, to trust God. To trust Him. Because to grow intentionally, we have got to have faith to believe Him. Yes, we do. That He is what He said He would do. He will do exactly what He said He would do. And I will tell you this. This is how we are sometimes when God's willing to take a hold and bless us. When God wants to, to use what He knows that has gone wrong in your life to make it to your good and you're there like a child with a, 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 a jar of peanut butter wanting to hold it back because you're afraid that He's going to take it from you or He's going to make it worse or not give you what you need. Come on now. I want to tell you this little example. And this is a true example. Very true. It just happened weeks ago. This man and woman had like a two-year-old son. And this son 
had never tasted the peanut butter. Y'all listen, because this is important. I hope you get a little bit out of what I, what I got out of it. Come on, man. Because this is how we are. This child tasted this peanut butter. And his mother loved peanut butter, and his father didn't, didn't care too much for it. But anyway, this child, after this experience, that they had went on vacation, and somehow they had gotten some peanut butter crackers or, or just a jar of peanut butter or something. But this child tasted the peanut butter. And he loved it. He could barely talk, and his mother would tell him, this is peanut butter, this is peanut butter. He got to where he was asking for it. When they got back home, amen, he realized and he figured out that it was in this jar. You know, it was in this jar. What he liked was in that jar. Now, y'all hear me today. What he liked and what he wanted and what he desired more than anything else at this time was that peanut butter. Come on now. And this man went and opened the refrigerator door and that little boy run up there and grabbed that peanut butter. <laughs> run up there and grabbed that jar. Amen. And he, he walked back out of there and he said, Come here, son, let me open it for you. And he know. Come here, son, let me give it to you. No. Bud, bud, bud. I'm talking like this. And he ran from his dad and he said, His dad was the one telling him about this. And he said he ran over just as far away from him, just to hugging that peanut butter, and just as far away from him. And he said, He said, I was just trying to help him. I was just wanting to to help him and to open that can of peanut butter, jar of peanut butter. But he said he ran just as far as he could and he got just as far as he could go and the, the man said that he was just sort of crowding him in. Afraid he's going to drop the jar just any minute or whatever. And he just got into the corner into the, into the corner there and he said, let daddy have it open. He said, uh-uh, uh-uh, like that. And he said that he reached down after God showed him something, that he reached down and got that peanut butter and opened it. He said, that kid just stuck his hands in there and just wanted that peanut butter so bad. Saying all that, say this, church. Sometimes we get to the point that we think we like something so well that it's like that jar of peanut butter. Come on, can't get enough of it. God's saying, look, I want to help you. No, no. I can do this by myself. Come on. That's what that little kid was thinking. <clears throat> I can do this. Leave me alone. I want this, you know. <clears throat> but we can't do it without God. Yeah. Saying all that to say this right here. We have to have a mind to grow in God and know who He is and what He is. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. we got to move purposely toward a goal. we got to set a goal in our life to live for the Lord. And this is where it starts. Chapter 4 of the book of Romans. We're talking about a man by the name of Abraham. Amen. That had got to, it had come to a, 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 a place here where there was confusion and arguments and things about circumcision and all these things. And, and the, the, the difference between the law of the world and the law of God and all these things. But here, the law is circumcision. But here, we're going to talk about Abraham and what is said about what how Abraham felt, what he did. Come on now. It said, for, it said in verse 1, What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, we know I just tried to explain a little bit of that, by works he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. In other words, he had done a lot of great things, Brother Wayne. Wow. He had something that he could boast about, but it wasn't the things of God. It wasn't yeah. anything to have him gain nowhere in God. See, it doesn't matter what we own or possess. Right. But it matters who that we know and hear it. Abraham knew God and he said, For what saith the Scripture, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness because he believed God. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of that. Alright, we're going to go on from there. We're going to jump over here a little bit to verse 
16. It says, Therefore, it was of faith that it might be by grace. You hear about I didn't choose how to read this. God did. It died out on four and began right back here but talking about the grace or by works. Therefore, it was of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise. The promise. God's made a lot of promises to you and I. The promise might be sure to all the seed. All the seed. Not to that only which is of the law but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Yes, now listen is. to this. <clears throat> As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Amen. Brother Derek, do you remember you talking about just that just a few nights ago? Talking about how that God wants to move in your life, amen. Though that though that you may be sick, though that you may be bound financially, brother, though that it doesn't matter how what position that it was, that praise God, through faith, God can move all obstacles. Amen. Through faith, God can do it all, brother. And this is a growing process that you and I, if we haven't known this, we need to know it now. It's not been talked about, not been read about, not been discussed all week long thus far in the weekend. It's by faith, praise God, God can move mountains. But now listen to this. It said that who against hope in verse 18? Believed in hope. Who against hope? In other words, in the eyes of man. That's right. He trusted and he believed in hope. That, the, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the de deadness of Sarah's womb. Amen. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. A growing process. Yes. Sometimes God may, may say thanks to you and I, and listen to this next verse, says, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. Ah, oh, do you know what persuasion means? Absolutely sure of, there's no doubt in my mind. I am persuaded, Paul said, that nothing shall separate me from the love of Christ Jesus. Oh, I'm talking about praise God. Hallelujah, you and I sometimes, amen, God, amen, tries to deal with you in the circumstances of your sicknesses and in the things that's going on in your life and your finances and all of these other things. And He wants us to know, listen, if I said I'll bless you and I'll make you the head and not the tail and you shall live and not borrow, then why are you wavering? Healing is the children's bread. Why don't we get healed? We will be healed. Amen. We will get healed. See, I've seen miracles take place too. Well, we're talking about healing here, brother. When the children of God begins to, as I was saying the other night, brother, and I, I was, I don't even remember exactly the message that I was preaching, but I remember this. The Word of God spoke to my heart and told me that, listen, this is the house of God, brother. It is to be respected. This is the man of God, amen, that is in heaven. It is, it is to on. be respected. It is. Brother, in the old days back yonder, amen, they didn't carry anything into the temple but the Holy of Holies. Glory to God, they put them in there, and I'm telling you, they dressed like it was royalty there. They dressed, brother, amen, and they put themselves together, amen, with everything that they had, the finest clothing that they had, amen, the finest uh, perfumes that they had. And I was noticing, amen, when, when the trump was over there, over there in the, in the uh, Arabian, whatever that place is over there, amen, praise God that you see the beauty. 
Did you see how they dressed in all the paints that was, amen, of this world? But still, they represented with the best that they had, that they had, that they had, to bring in the counsel yeah. of God, to bring in the here. But the greatest thing He wants is your soul. Amen. amen. Brother Frankie, what are you preaching then? I'm preaching to listen. I'm going to preach to you the things that will clean up the inside. And sometimes when I preach the things that will clean up the inside, you get a little bit of hint of what cleans up the outside. Yeah. Glory to God. God will do it both, I'm telling you. Yeah. But I want you to think of this thing right here. You must, your own intentionally, or this thing right here is going to go right past your ear. Come on now. The Word of God said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God saith. Amen. Amen. Unto the church. That's right. I'm doing what are you saying, Brother Frankie? I went into a church here a while back to hold services, and I was in revival. And I preached one message, brother. Amen. And listen to what happened. Amen. They shut the revival down because I preached about the piercenesses in their navels. I preached about what God, again, I didn't call none of this out, but I preached against sin in the church. But you know what they call themselves? Oh, we just a casual church. Uh -huh. Oh, I just got casually right on down the road, brother, and the doors were shut. God didn't honor it. Amen. That's right. Glory to God. If you don't like this, you need to pray. Come on, bro. Praise the Lord. But I want to tell you this right here. He's made a promise to those that obey when he have to say. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Talking about Abraham. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. Reckon who else it was written for? I believe he just wanted you and I to hear the message, don't you? Yes. I believe that, praise God, it says, now it was not written for his sake only, alone, that it was inputted to him, but for us also, yeah. to whom it shall be inputted. And I can say right here, if we believe, if we press, if we strive, if we quit doubting, if we, quit, if we quit confessing too much of what's wrong and begin to give the testimonies of God, when a man of God stands up, has anybody got a testimony? Oh, yeah, brother, be praying for me. The devil's been on my back all week. I'm Come sick on. as dog. I can't hardly do nothing. I've been throwing up for three days. Come on now. That is not testimony, church. One more thing. Come on. Testimony is lifting your holy hands of the Lord. And lift up those feeble hands that hang down. Glory to God. And give God praise for bread today. Glory to God. That tomorrow you may feel better because you didn't tell the devil how much good he was doing. Glory to God. Come on now. But for us also, to him, it was him put it. If we believe on Him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Glory to God. Glory to God. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Yes. All right, now listen to what happened. It said He was raised for our justification. Verse 1 of chapter 5. It said, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace yes. with God. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what should this peace do for you and I? Brother, when we believe upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and His birth, thank praise God. Amen. Yeah. When we was first became a child of God, oh, we yeah. received peace yeah. to know that I was born of God. Yeah. Amen. It gave me a, a boost, brother, to go on and press a little further. I heard there's a promise. I heard there's a promise. Amen. That we can have there is a promise. Come on. Then I'm going to tell you what's going to slap you in the face. Uh-oh. Turn with me. With this peace, brother, cometh a lot of tribulation. Amen. But we had another witness. We had another man of God. Now, we, you realize this. We've already had Abraham. We've already had Paul. And we know that Paul... You say, well, why in the world did he call him? Because he was a sinner. That's right. And he knew, praise God, that he had he had uh, he had a ambitious in his life to go after what he believed in. 
An ambition, Brother Wayne. He was in the wrong thing, but he had an ambition and a drive in what he believed. Yeah, and brother, I'm telling you, you read all the books. I mean, I'm going to preach in about three or four of them tonight. Hey, Amen. Listen, all the books that Paul wrote, brother, all he did from that time, that time forward, hey, amen, to say, I'm not even worthy. I'm the least of all the uh, children yeah. of God. Hey, amen. But I'll tell you this. you got to live right, walk tight, brother, and spend quiet. you got to live yeah. for God. Yeah. Come on, right. Learn through your mistakes. That's all God wants out of this, brother, man. If we learn through our mistakes, we're growing intentionally. But here was another writer by the book of James. And it said this. Did y'all hear what I just said now? Therefore being justified through Jesus Christ here. You know, we have peace. All right, now what's going to happen? The first thing the devil does, brothers and sisters, when we get something from God, he tries to knock all our two feet right out from under us. Yep. He don't even want you to land on your hands. He wants you to just plop, pile up the ground with your face. But James said right here, verse, verse 1 of the first chapter of James. Come on now. After we've got peace, we've got something, church. We really do. Knowing that Christ has set me from free from death and sin, but has given me new life, new life. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. How about we be the thirteenth tribe? How about that? How about that? He said greetings to you and I tonight. Come on, brother. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Yeah, yeah. Do what? How can I be proud of anything? Brother, you could go to a steak and biscuit up there in Molden. This morning, sometimes I was sitting eating breakfast, brother, and I was talking about the Lord, and this woman talked about, I thank the Lord for my sickness. Because you know what? If I if I was like my mother or like my dad, I wouldn't be able to speak it. I wouldn't be able to show it because they was totally bad stricken. They had they had a, a, a strokes that they couldn't even speak. They couldn't do nothing. Couldn't show no reaction. So thank God that I could still walk. Thank God that I could still talk. Thank God that I don't have to complain all the time. Thank God that sometimes I'm broke is everything. Yes, Why? Because I know when God blesses me. Yeah. Brother, when He lets me make a $3,000 week every now and then, when it's hard to make seven or eight or nine, amen, I'm blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Amen. And brother, Derek and I, we have a whole lot, long time, few and in between, long time between to make those kind of weekends these days. And I don't Amen. know about him, but I got a whole lot of overhead cost to get it there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but I want you to hear this right here. <clears throat> My brother, count it all joy <clears throat> when you fall into divers temptation. Know it. I want you to listen, know it. Y'all remember last night, night before last, I, I kept expressing that. Paul's writing, he said, knowing that the old man is dead. Knowing that he, you've already been crucified with him. Yeah. Knowing that if you've been crucified with him, you shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Yeah. Knowing, praise God, hallelujah, that God has done give you peace. Yeah. Knowing that God yeah. has given you victory. Yeah. Knowing that God has given you joy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Through all the adversaries of hell. Yeah. Knowing these things, why can't we say, thank you, Jesus, for my trial? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for this situation I'm in. Oh, because why? Because, God, I know that you're going to make me uh, more than an overcomer. Glory to God. You're going to make me an example. Come on now. You're going to make me an example that people may see me, praise God, and not my flesh, praise the Lord, but the Spirit of God that liveth therein. But let, listen. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith, what does it do? Praise God. It work of patience. How many in here has got patience? <laughs> Come on. Well, I'm a little short. Uh -huh. I'm just a little bit short these days. God's confession is good for the soul. I need your prayers. 
I need your prayers to line up to this word, praise God. Because if we don't line up to every jot and every tittle of this word, we're going to find ourselves being weighed in the balance and coming up short. Glory to God. Oh, it don't sound like the voice of the devil was trying to kill a while ago, does it? That's God, praise the Lord. Come on now, yeah. But let patience have but let. Listen, church, it's left up to you and I. Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire. You mean nothing. Yeah, but Frankie, you can't be perfect. Said right here, I could be. I can't be in him. Yes, sir, I'll see fault in me. I'll see fault in you. You'll see fault in me. But he's still working on me. Glory to God. And he's making me what he wants me to be. And let me tell you, he's doing that for you. But does that give us the, the license, brother, to go out there and see it? Absolutely not. God forbid. They that are dead to sin, how can we live any longer there in? If they're sinning in you, you're no none of God. You're bastard and not sons. What's going to be preached to you in a moment? Listen, Brother Frank, that's some hard preaching. Well, that's what God's called me to preach. Bring it, brother. That's exactly what He's called me to preach. Amen. If there be any hard work. See, the Lord told me, listen, you can't preach my word hard. It's all salvation. It's all love. It's all compassion. Because if I don't tell you the truth, I might as well go ahead and say it. It's just like I was saying a moment ago. There's men of this world that teach their children God out of manly love. But if God don't collect us, and listen, if we're if, if the pastors and the teachers and the and the, the, the evangelists, if they don't preach God's uh, full power to you, and still want all your money and, and, and everything else be okay, I believe in tithing with all my heart. You know it, I done preached. Give him more than just your tenth part, and that begin that is the first part. Not the last if you got any left. You'll never have it left. <laughs> Amen. But listen to me. It says this right here. But if we'll let patience have a perfect work, in other words, what God wants to do, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That means mature, by the way. Mature. Showing a growth every day. Showing an ambition every day to get more. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him ask of God. That giveth to all liberty. That means freedom. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And it shall be given him. Amen. I want to turn, if you will. This is where that we are still growing, church. Every move that we make is moving toward. Toward. Toward the prize. Come on. Touch my heart. I'm going to read something else. All right. Moving purposely toward a goal. What is the goal? What it just said. The trying of our faith, work of patience, patience, experience, and experience hope. Hope for what? Eternal life. Hope to be with Him forever and ever. All right, now listen to this right here. Hebrews chapter 12. Beginning with verse 1. It says, we're still talking about all the examples. We done went through three, right? Abraham, Paul, James. The writer of Hebrews has always been sort of up in the air. Everybody about has their opinion. But it doesn't matter with me who wrote it. I'm just glad to be it. Amen. 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 Verse 1 of chapter 12 <clears throat> says this. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us not sinners. 
<laughs> Let us lay aside every weight. Yes, and I want you to know, this is not talking about the sin. Right. We are compassed about with ever, ever great thing that was done that God Himself thought that you and I could comprehend in this Word. We're compassed with it. Brother Derek, it's written here, if you don't study to show thyself approved, you're, you're, you're missing miracles. You're missing the, the elevator, if you will, of the that will transform you from death unto life, from darkness to light. Yes, amen. You're missing it all. Amen. If you're not using these witnesses, Brother George, I believe that one of the greatest, well, outside of him coming in his own. Come on. This is the greatest thing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Not one of But church, let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you now. If you live in this time, in this day and time, yeah. this word will be taken from you. And what you know about God better be <laughs> built in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And what you want, brother, He will write it up on the tablets of our heart. If we wanted to. Amen. We're foreseeing we also are compassed to what by with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin. Singular. It. it doesn't have to be a cart full of it. It doesn't have to be, brother, uh, well, the Bible says I'm perfect here. Alright, but what does he say? Let us lay aside every weight. What is this weight? I don't know. What is it? You know what it is? Anything that don't look like God, smell like God, or act like Him. Anything that presents yourself something other than a godly person. Anything that you might be ashamed of somebody, amen, You seeing you drink, or somebody seeing you eat, you mean those things? If God, if something's wrong with your temple, those things are wrong. Do you not understand? Your temple is the is the <laughs> home of Christ. Your temple, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. What are you going to bring in it? Brother Derek. What I'm preaching today is this. This is a holy place for Lord. What you bring in here, if you're a sinner, it doesn't matter what you've got on. It doesn't matter what you smell like. It doesn't matter how you present yourself to the altar. But when you become a child of God, it means everything. Yeah. Yeah. It means everything. Yeah. Because what if the lost came in? Yeah. Do you want you you want them to? Uh, well, I can be more like them. They'll feel more at home. Now you're out there in the world with them. That's what's taking place. Yeah. You've done been in too many of those. You done been in too many of those uh, uh, leisure type churches. Yeah. You done been in too many of those casual type churches. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be in the leisure type nor the casual type. I wear the clothing I wear because I want to look presentable. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, brother. Amen, bro. For the Lord. Yeah. For the Lord. I keep shaving because I want to look presentable. Brother, let me tell you something. I can go out in the world and work all the time, and I do during the week, brother. I might have a few whiskers scratched up here. Come on. And last night, just overnight, they grew a little bit. Come on, brother. But I, I had to come last night with what little bit I had. But from here, you couldn't see it. Come on. But when I get close, you can. Oh, God just showed us something. Uh -huh. Oh, from right here, you might not see it. Right. But buddy, you stay around me five minutes and I'll see it. Oh, Frankie, I can I, I might not hide it against God, but I can hide it from you. I can hide it from my preacher.
preacher, not a thorough man of God, you won't. Not a thorough child of God, you won't. There's a lot of stuff that's tried to be hid in this church. Derek Jones is not blind to it. I guarantee you. Why? Because his spirit bears witness with mine, and I'm not blind to it either. How come you think God's allowing me to preach? Come on. God needs His people who are called by my name to come down to the brass tacks, amen, where the rubber meets the road, praise God. It, it, it wants us to come down and realize, praise God, that He wants to lift us up. He's given us ever, ever example that can be imagined. And I, I held you short last night. I'm not worried about pulling the trigger tonight, brother. I'm going to tell you, listen to this verse. And the sin which do us so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of, of our, our faith. faith. Where did it start? It started in believing and having faith in God. Yeah. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy and peace, as we were talking about, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross. Amen. See the joy and peace that God gave His Son, brother, knowing that He was fulfilling His will there in the Garden of Gethsemane when He said, Father, if it's any other way, but not my will, thy will be done. Amen. He got a joy. Come on now. He got a peace no matter if the flesh didn't want to die. But He got a joy to go all the way, brother. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You hear what the church needs tonight? Yeah. For the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Despise. Despising the shame of the death of the cross. You sit down at the right hand of the Despising cross. the shame of the death of the cross. Do you know, do you and I know that that was, that was the worst type of, 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 of people that could be to die on the cross? Yes, sir. But he was the Savior of the Lord. He was the Savior of the world. 